but we are back live. And our goal is to be here between 20 to 30 minutes. And we're gonna be talking about addressing, uh, overcoming adversity. But before getting there and before, uh, like, like before you introduce yourself, Dan, I just wanna say that there we are setting out to talk about overcoming adversity and then Ovida happened, you know? And uh, I, what I wanna say is that level of adversity, I've never been to that level of adversity. I can not even possibly fathom what those families are going through. I have kids in elementary school. So I'm not here to downplay the suffering of anyone going through that, which I can even possibly imagine. I'm going to share with you how I've overcome some of my adversities and, uh, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here in service. So I just would like to have a moment of silence for those families, for the community and for everyone who's involved in that. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, uh, just respect and our prayers and thoughts go out to everyone out there. Like as a student, I couldn't imagine being in a situation like that. And for you as a parent, like just dropping your stupid your kids off and just those situations shouldn't happen and we shouldn't have those fears. So I think as a country, we can do better. We're not here to talk about that, but Overall, I think we can do better. Yes, definitely. We'll be talking about adversities. We'll be talking about our, the adversities we've been through. We'll be talking about everyday life adversities. And uh, it's great to have you here, Dan. Why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, Dan Stoll, founder of Nova Fusion. I just graduated college. So hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me doing these lives and stuff. But really, um, what I do is I try and help people overcome adversity because I've been through a lot of stuff myself, whether that's through health, relationships, finding my path in this world. Um, we can all relate to that. But that's kind of why I'm here is to help others and help them find their path as well. And overall, uh, transform pain into purpose. That's one of my uh, taglines that I use because we all go through pain and suffering on a daily, weekly basis. And if I can help people get out of that and share some things that I've learned along my journey, that's what it's all about for me. So yeah, I'm excited I love, to be here. I love that oh, uh, transforming pain into transforming pain in, into purpose. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so you know what? I still get very nervous for these lives. And uh, we can start there because that's already an adversity right there. I love doing these lives. I want to do them, but I get nervous about them, you know? So one trick I use to be here is to imagine that everybody that is coming to watch, everybody that's, well, right now, everybody that is here, they do fit that, what I'm going to say. But I imagine that everybody that's ever going to watch this live is someone that's very close to me, is a good friend, someone that loves me, and someone that I love. And this way... It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable and then a little bit more at ease. Yeah, I love that. And something <laughs> that helps me because I feel the same way with doing these lives. Uh, exciting to do, but actually doing it, there's a lot of nervous and anxiety that goes into that. But, um, you know, thinking about the people that you can help impact that you can spread with others, like even if it's just helping one person, you never know how that ripple effect is gonna extend out to the people closest to them and so on. So, and it doesn't matter if they're watching live now, like we got our friend Junior here, but yeah, it could be someone watching think, like in a year from now and that could impact them the same way as it impacts Junior here. So that's what yeah. I think it's the great thing. And then we take the focus out of ourselves and into the people we're helping. And then that also helps us uh, be more at ease. Yeah, like I'm not thinking about Dan right now. <laughs> Just exactly. Projecting and trying yeah. to help as many people. Yes. Well, I think one thing about adversity that we both agree is that it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. It's, it's, there is no escape. It's, it's, it's a certainty in life is adversity. No matter how much you organize your life, you know, some people, they like to organize their lives so there will be no adversity in terms of how they, even how they put the furniture in their house, uh, 
the type of work that they look for in, in, in everything, you know, the type of relationship they look for, how they drive to work, because they want to escape adversity. And, uh, well, it's going to find you somehow, you know, it's going to come from somewhere. That's, that's one, that's the nature of adversity, you know, and w w what is adversity? Adversity, I'd say, is everything that goes uh, against your expectations, right? It can be something big, can be something small, and it's going to happen. So based on that, I would like to start by saying that for me, the, the number one thing about adversity is not when it shows up, but the work you've done before you actually have any sort of adversity in your life, meaning how do you face those circumstances that you do not expect? How do you come to them? Do you have an immediate reaction? Do you come to them from, is this immediate reaction anger, frustration, sadness? Or do you come at it with a certain curiosity? You know, hmm, hmm, this is happening. You know, something minor, for example, you're driving to work, you're late, and then suddenly you hit traffic. Okay, this is happening now. And that's where I believe that a certain level of detachment can help. Mm -hmm. A level yeah, of detachment good. from reactions, detachment from your own personality. And, and, and uh, yeah, well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm going too fast here because there are more things I want to talk about this. But anyways, your mindset, even before adversity comes, I think it can, be, it can really make a difference. Yeah, I love what you said, that adversity will find you because, well, I think we should train for adversity for that exact reason, because yeah. like you should look for it or else it's going to catch you off guard. And if you caught off guard, that's going to be something where you're reacting, with, like reacting to anger or whatever emotion, and you're not taking it in when you plan for adversity. Uh, sorry, I just saw Craig's comment here. <laughs> um, made me laugh. Um, but yeah, if you plan for it, um, you're not yes. going to be caught off guard. You're not going to be caught off guard. Of course, there will be those that you can. You will never know that they are coming, right? You cannot. Some of the some of those adversities you cannot plan. So it's just a mind of developing a more not only resilient but this detachment that I was talking about. You know, uh, the other day I, I I saw this post from uh, Naval Ravikant. I hope I'm not butchering this. And uh, he was talking about this detachment, the people he likes to get involved with are people that have a certain detachment from their personality, people that don't get angry too easily, don't get sad too easily, you know? And I think this detachment is something very good to, to uh, cultivate for many areas of your life. But since you're talking about adversity, once you develop this, this detachment from the things that happen in your life, you are in a much better position to deal when those adversities come, be they big, be they small. And I'd like to remind the audience here that both Dan and I, we've had our shares of hardcore adversities, uh, health-wise and, and other types. So yeah, I believe this kind of detachment can help a lot. Mm -hmm. I think another thing with detachment, um, you don't have expectations when you do that and expectations lead to disappointment. So when you just fully detach from outcomes like that, um, it's going to be easier and you're not going to, your mind isn't going to be thinking too much about this big overwhelming problem that you have to deal with. Yes. You can just go with the flow. Exactly. And I actually have this in my notes right here. Don't fuel too much. Don't, 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 uh, don't dwell too much on the problem itself. Adversity yeah. will show up. Now you have the choice. You have the choice. If you don't do the preparation advance, you, you might see yourself as a victim. You might see, mm -hmm you know, what's happening as unfair. And the, the reality is everybody's hit, everybody's faced with adversity. So you might see this, you might see the circumstances as unfair and uh, you might start dwelling too much on the problem itself, on the adversity itself. And in my case, for me, that's not a good option. That's not, that's not gonna help you, you know? That's not gonna help you to, to just dwell on the problem and just, you know, uh, sulk yourself into that kind of victimhood. Yeah. Um, I forget what I was going to say, but like things, I was always, well, victim mindset. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I used to have really bad, especially when I got sick out of nowhere with Crohn's disease. It's for those who don't know, it's, um, inflammatory bowel disease and 
I didn't have any idea what that was until I was introduced to it, like medical wise. But for the longest time, like two, three years, I was in a really victim mindset of why did this happen to me? And whenever something bad would happen, I didn't, I couldn't really take myself out of it and have this uh, detached perspective. And it was always just why me, why me? But when you do that, um, takes your power away and it gives it to these external circumstances that you don't have any control of. And when you give your power back and you take control, you, I like the stoic philosophy. It's like, you can't control events, but you can control what you do. You can control your thoughts and how you think about certain things. So what's bad, what you think is bad, it's really neutral. And I'm the person that said it was bad when it, it really, it's not, it's just how I think about that. So I wanted to try and uh, translate that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when you, that's when you pivot it, you think? That's when you start realizing that, that you, you, you changed and you felt more in control of what was going on in your life? Yeah, honestly, when I got like more personal time for myself, um, really when I like split with my girlfriend at the time, because I was kind of codependent on her and my mom. But then when that split happened, I was really just independent. And it was like, okay, I can't blame external. I can't blame my girlfriend for leaving me. I can't blame the universe for giving me this illness. Like I have to take what everything has given me and I have to make the most out of it. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Yeah, I like that. I like Stoic uh, philosophy. Yeah, we definitely, there are a few things in our lives that we can't control, but we can always 100% control how we react to them, how we feel about them. And one of the things that we can do, that we can feel, and that is totally okay, and I think it's part of the process of dealing with adversity, is mourning, grieving. You know, grief is 100% okay. You know, uh, mourning is part of the process. You've been to a situation that you realize you don't have, like, like you lost something or something's missing from your life and it's okay to mourn it's part mm -hmm. of dealing with the adversity what i'm what i'm saying here i'm not talking about ignoring your feelings or just soldiering through yeah. anything that comes to your life i've also had my share of health wise adversities you know two years ago a tumor was found inside my stomach it wasn't cancer but nonetheless it was a tumor it was a it was the size of a golf ball and uh, i was faced first of all with the choice so are you going to remove it or not I had the choice. Of course, all the doctors they recommended, I, I had it removed. So I opted to have it removed. And I mean, we're talking about someone who has, has always taken care of their health. I've always been, you know, I've always been careful with my health. I've always been very aware of my body and everything. So for me, it came as a surprise. And I almost slid into that victimhood as in, shit, what the fuck? What, sorry about the, <laughs> the F word. I don't, I, I'm not sure if this is PG or not. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> but I, I was sliding into that victimhood thing. You know, why this is happening to me and right. not to them. And, you know, not to them who, I don't know, smoke or yeah. don't do anything about their lives. And I ended up having it extracted. It was major surgery. The recovery was very long and slow. But I used, that was a chance for me to put into practice all my techniques techniques of, of accountability, of self-responsibility. And actually, when I think back those two years ago, I, I didn't feel, I felt very little, like the period of time that I felt like a victim was very short. I'd say maybe a few hours. You know, I don't remember as a sad moment in my life at all. I remember just as something that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was very enriching to my life to have that kind of experience. I feel super healthy now. I, I haven't been back for 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 uh, uh, an imaging in a long time. Maybe I should, <laughs> but I'm yeah. cool with that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one of the things I did, which is also an interesting technique, if you believe in that, if it, if you think it could work for you, was when I was going into surgery before the surgery, I started doing a lot of visualization and a lot of meditation. And that's something that can be used in any kind of adversity. And in the visualization, in this case, I would imagine my tumor shrinking and drying out. Mm. And what happened is when I went into surgery, when, when it was over, the doctor came up to me and he said, listen, your body behaved beautifully. There was almost no blood. And I attribute that to the meditation and to the visualization. Yeah, it's, 
it's amazing how the mind and the body can work together like that. And just that connection, like, it's so amazing. Like, I've had experiences uh, myself, just like, I don't pray. I'm not a, a much of a religious person, but during my surgeries, I did pray. And it felt weird to me, like, asking for help, um, like an unknown source, but I had a very good healing experience. And I can actually say that I can like attribute it to this praying and this extended faith that I had at that period of time. Yeah, I believe in that 100% because I believe that there is this connection. We, we have more control of our bodies than we think. And the ways to access the, those parts of our body that they feel they're autonomous, it's not, it's not through regular, it's not through conscious thinking. It's, there is some, some level of subconscious there involved in prayers and, and, and emotions. And I think that's what we both did. I, I didn't know about this, this about yourself. So it's great, great to hear, man. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. I love hearing uh, your stuff too. I didn't know you went through that uh, health experience, but I think those really change our perspective on life. Like there's a stoic phrase, memento mori, remember that uh, you will die or death is coming. And through those experiences, like, I don't know about you, but when you went under for surgery, like there's always that thought in your head, like what if they mess up? Like you're putting your body in someone else's hands and you're unconscious. Like there's always that thought. And um, to come back on the other side of that, it really just like shows you that like, yeah, I'm not gonna be here forever and I wanna make the most out of my time here while I can. Yeah, it's a deep exercise of surrender because yes, like you said, you go you go unconscious and someone is opening your body and, and doing stuff inside of you that you have no idea what it is and something yeah. and things can go awry, things can go wrong. And uh, yeah, every time you go you go through through a process like this, you might not come back alive. Yeah. And it's the reality, right, of things. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think that really just drives my perspective to be more growth oriented and just make the most out of my time here, meet as many people as I can and just enjoy life because we really only get one shot at this. And this is a great perspective to deal with adversity, right? Because mm -hmm. you see things from a broader perspective, like you have a bird's, bird's eye view of life. So when adversities hit you, it's not like the end of the world right it's not like it's the most important thing in your life it's just one of the things in your life you know it's much broader than that yeah yeah exactly and another thing with anybody going through adversity right now uh especially if it's like feels really overwhelming i think a good exercise is to think of something that you did in the past that you initially thought was impossible and how you overcame that and then you maybe can use some of the same strategies and tools that you used before. But overall, just having that perspective of like, damn, I did that in the past. Like it could put whatever you have now, like into such a smaller perspective and lift that unburdening weight off your shoulders. Definitely. And if you're very aware of that and keep track of those events, you in, it, you, it's like you have more tools in your toolbox in your toolbox, mm -hmm. you can always go back to those tools because you remember how you dealt with that in the past. And that actually builds confidence. That builds confidence for you to deal with future events. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, hey, I, I did this, I can do that. And it just, it keeps on, it's like stepping stones. Yeah. So I'm seeing a common line here, which is awareness, which is this awareness of the, of the events in your past, adversities in your past that you have overcome and uh, also this detachment from from your uh your personality from your from immediate reactions which is also part of awareness you know mm -hmm. so yeah i didn't think of this before but i'm i'm coming to the conclusion that awareness in general is a great tool to develop to cultivate cultivate and that can help you deal with any kind of adversity yeah 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. that sounds that sounds right so we've been here for 25 minutes. Okay, this flies, man. Whenever, I, we haven't done as many of these talks as I know we wanted to, but every time we come on here, it feels like the time just flies. Yes, it flies. I'm going over my notes to see if there's anything else I would like to add to that, but it definitely flies. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, I thought we brought some good nuggets to the audience. Uh, they can be the judge of that, but. I would love to see comments. I would love to see what you, have, what you all have to say in the comments and if you have any questions and even suggestions for future topics because we plan to do this mm -hmm. on a more regular basis, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you have any final words? Well, I think, I think my final words are just repeating what I just said. Yes, cultivating awareness is something that can help you in your life with pretty much everything. And with adversity, Yes, it's a major win. You know, like I said, adversities are just a fact of life. We cannot avoid them. We can do everything in our lives to avoid them, build our, our, build our, our lives around avoiding any kind of adversity, but they will find you. So yes. you, should, you must be prepared. You know, even before you have any adversity in your life, you can be prepared building awareness and building detachment from, from your emotions and your personality. All right, and I'll add on to that just one thing, a uh, little exercise that people can do uh, pretty much every day is do something uncomfortable, get out of your comfort zone every day, but do something that like really scares you inside. Because if you do that day after day, your confidence is going to grow, you're going to break out of your shell, and you're just going to be a whole new person, like even a month after that, you do that 30 times that's gonna add up <laughs> yes couldn't agree more love this all right man it was great talking to you and i definitely look forward to doing future episodes yeah it's great talking to you too dan all right man all right take care man take care